Work out there today, worked for almost two straight hours of really, really good football. Um, I got excited earlier in the week because I saw the conditions and I knew this was going to be very similar to like our Michigan State game. Uh, that was a game that really was unprecedented for me, the amount of volume of wind and everything. So uh, really good uh, work for us out there today. Um, uh, really uh, came out pretty clean too, a couple guys nicks, nicks and injuries, but we pulled some of our major guys out like uh, 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 two old linemen, Isaiah and, and Julian. And on offense, Isaiah Williams, and on defense, we pulled Johnny and Keith uh, after that early down work, and then got a lot of really good work with the young guys. Obviously, new quarterbacks would love to have given those guys a little better uh, conditions to go out there and throw it around, but uh, a lot of really good work for us to learn off of. Um, uh, really did all situational work, did early downs, did third down, did red area, uh, did live kicking uh, with the, with the field goal and punt units, uh, just had a good field goal rally there at the end. I think both of our kickers made 57 yarders right there at the end. So in these wind conditions, pretty amazing. Um, but other than that, open it up. All things considered, what did you see from the quarterbacks? From the quarterbacks, you know, the, really, this is practice number six. Um, you know, on uh, on Tuesday, we had a really good day. It was the first day we were out on the field. We did red area for practice one through three. Uh, so, so the Tuesday practice was probably their best day overall. Um, uh, Thursday was okay, and then today just really, obviously, uh, tough weather conditions. But uh, they're picking it up. Um, Coach Lunny has, you know, had great rapport in that room. Has uh, continued to see those guys grow. I think they interact with their other players really well. Which for me, as a head coach, that's what I'm really looking at. They're picking things up and understanding how we play here. Jeske's had a really good spring. Um, you know, he's kind of popped around. We're playing him at right tackle, but uh, probably has guard value as well. Um, has, has totally kind of changed his body. Um, uh, you, you know, Tony Paschal actually has worked with him quite a bit, and it's kind of fun to see his demeanor grow. So he goes and works out with Tony during his breaks and uh, uh, has really done a great job. And then obviously the development in our weight room and with Coach Miller on the offensive line, it's it's been fun to watch this kid grow, and I think he's got a bright future. You had the high school coaches in this weekend. Yeah. Just how they go, what do you think? I mean, I know that's a big deal for you. I, yeah, I know Thursday night uh, we always host an event over here. I think last year we maybe in our team meeting room, it wasn't even full. I know this year we had 200 people waiting outside. I think there was over 250 people here on, okay. and uh, over 500 in general. Um, but, you know, I, I've constantly made a point to these guys uh, how much Illinois football matters to us. I, I said this stat the other day. I didn't even realize. I know it had been skewed. You guys that follow us, um, uh, you know, prior to me coming here, the two years prior, they had signed three players from the state of Illinois, Illinois had, and we've signed 23 in the last two years. So, uh, 20 more players over the last two years, and I, you know, we, we hopefully have uh, uh, put ourselves in a good position here with our Illinois coaches. And, and uh, today, this weekend, was just another step. Brent, you lose a guy like an All American running back like Chase Brown. You, you've had that before. Yeah. What's the dynamic of as a coaching staff and just as an offense to try and you know turn the page? Or you know, and very unusual because like even Reggie and, and Josh will probably be our heir parents, right? They 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 missed significant time last year too, and. Uh, that's why Chase had to have some of those workload days he did. Um, so it was really kind of an outlier for me because uh, usually we use two to three running backs overall and uh, want to get to that. I was excited to watch our young guys run today. Uh, obviously, Jordan uh, Anderson and Aiden, this is their second spring with us, which is a big difference. And, and, and to be quite honest, Caden has been very impressive uh, just the way he's picked things up. And physically, he's obviously a very gifted athlete. So, uh, yeah, we did want to establish our demeanor in the run game. I think uh, – uh, today, all those guys kind of had some good runs. wasn't really a breakout run, but uh, uh, the defense just a little bit ahead of where we are right now. I mean, that looks like it's spearheaded by the defensive front. Uh, has it been kind of everything you maybe thought that they would be? You know, uh, uh, Johnny and Keith, we, we took them out pretty early, right? So I was kind of been waiting to see how, how these other guys. So a, a guy that's really stood out, uh, said McConnell, has had probably as good a fall in spring um, as we could hope. I told him going into that first practice, nobody was more excited than our coaches to watch him play uh, a new ad addition of, of a couple other defensive linemen into the mix. T. Rod, we got a year ago, right? And, um, you know, a couple uh, uh, other guys that, and Kurtz had a really good uh, uh, offseason and a good spring for us so far. And then our ends, that, that outside linebacker room, you know, truly might be one of the most talented groups I've ever had uh, at that position. And I, I think they continue to, to show up. Kind of mixing and matching some DBs back there, the safeties especially. Uh, what are you guys seeing out of that? Like, are you getting a lot? From you know, um, uh, Xavier Scott really had a great finish to the year last year, and he's continued to grow, physically change. Um, you know, so that's there. Um, Prince and and uh, 
Uh, a couple of those guys in that class of contingency strain has had a really good uh, a spring for us. Um, and then new new additions, uh, obviously uh, brought in a Nicario Harper, who's uh, been at a couple different schools, and Nicario has really jumped out to us just athletically. He's learning how we do things here um, and, and the way we do things. Uh, I think today was another good step for him in the right direction. Can you know what it looks like another potential breakout KO? kid? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What have yeah. you seen from him? Kanana is a very, uh, you know, classic story, too. I told the coaches last night, really. Um, uh, coach Lynch, his coach in, 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 in high school, you know, was like, like, I remember I called him and he's like, hey, I got this guy. I believe he's going to an Ivy school, right? But um, I think he's a player here and he's just, you know, not quite, you know, the height that everybody wants. And I said, I always think about this, you know, I was, I was a linebacker coach at Iowa for Kirk. We had a linebacker visit that was, we thought he was going to be six foot. He was five, ten and a half. And, 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 and Kirk made a comment to me. He said that, you know, when he makes a tackle, have you ever, have you ever had anybody announce their height? They just usually call their name. And I, I, that always sticks out to me because I've had a lot of undersized linebackers who play with great heartbeats and great speed. And Kanena is, uh, A, an incredibly gifted athlete, but he's also very intelligent. And at that position, uh, to have the versatility that he does is a very, very good trait. And, yeah, he's had a great spring. I'm excited to see him continue to grow. Coach, when you're building that program, you know, this third drive for you, how important is your three? I mean, going back to your first couple of times, how important is I get the question, but they're all important, right? Okay. Like, I mean, um, in this day and age that we're in right now, like, uh, for us to build this program, I think we got to continue to take steps forward. Um, uh, you know, I know um, – in my coaching career, my third year at Wisconsin was probably my most difficult, but one of the most learning, right? Um, uh, my third year at, at Arkansas was probably our best year that we, you know, could see the see the rewards of what we had going. So um, year three for me is big because I've, I've learned from my past experiences, but also, uh, you know, it's a different world now with the portal, with the, with, with the NIL, the dynamics of all that. Um, scheduling the last two years, we've had two bye weeks this year. We don't have a bye week until really the back half of the season, right? Um, so there's a lot of different dynamics in the season, but it's one that I'm excited for. I think our coaches said, I do know this, we're, we're six practices in and we've won every practice, right? We haven't had a practice that has set us back or anybody that hasn't, I, I don't think, walked off the field feeling we got better. Um, so as long as I told our guys, we got 15 practices. If we can walk off that field 15 times, feeling good about the growth we've made, that's what we can control and that's what we'll do. And I think we've done that so far. What are your thoughts on Cruz and Barlett? Cruz and Barlow. Yeah, what, what you got now? Uh, Cruz in particular, right, has just continued to be very impressive. Um, uh, really tough football player, really high football IQ intelligence. I think Bart would even tell you uh, last year, you know, he, he probably knew the offense as good as anybody and how you got to handle it up front. You know, he's got it in his DNA, obviously. Uh, uh, he's been watching the center position for his whole life, and, and I'm sure he gets coached on a home phone call tonight as well. Um, uh, but uh, really impressed with Josh and what he's done. Uh, Barlev is probably another guy like Geske, uh has really kind of changed his body and continued to grow. And, um, you know, he's truly an inside player, guard to center, and, and uh, um, doing a little bit more center work for us. But I'm, I'm excited. He's, he's uh, continued to take steps forward and, and um, you know, take the challenges that we've given him. Kind of a depth chart question, but when Zai comes back, do you anticipate him? Staying at guard or moving outside? You know, uh, Zai's in, in his rehab program and is, is doing awesome with that. Um, the versatility that Zai brings is not just guard tackle, but left to right as well. So we, we'll we put our best five players when, when we go to play Toledo. We'll have our best five out there. Aaron mentioned uh, speed on defense. Has really stood out to him. Speed and length is kind of what you guys have been working towards, right? Like in recruiting? Is, yeah, is like I, I think when people watch us, right, they come out and they're just like, wow, you guys are really long. Uh, the speed does show up, but. You know, a guy like Tyson Rooks, he was our uh, practice player, defensive MVP of the day the other day, and uh, he just broke up several balls. He's got really incredible length, right? And uh, that allows him to actually, you know, play more than, than maybe fast, right? And, and yeah, on the edges in particular, we got good length. Um, uh, Nicario, who we mentioned at safety, he's a really long safety. Um, uh, it's, it's impressive. And, and Xavier Scott has grown since he's come here, not just weight-wise, but length-wise. And uh, I really like the length that we've recruited, and hopefully that pays off. You see that? You see the speed there? I mean, it's, it's, I do. I think we're fast. I mean, we always got to get faster. But, um, you know, I think uh, the game that we're playing in today's world, I think on the perimeter, you know, we obviously play with some bigs up front, but those other guys got to be able to run. Um, you know, and I think Tariq, he really is a guy uh, as an inside backer that's jumped out to me the level of, 
uh, speed and, and, and um, uh, kind of the tempo that he's played wet at the spring. We limited his reps out there today, but uh, right. CJ's better. Uh, uh, Dylan Rosiak, Kanena obviously can run really, really well. Um, and then in the back end, we've definitely recruited to that demeanor for sure. I wanted to ask you about Tyreek. He told us last week, he said, I, the captain seemed last year, he said he wasn't sure he was gonna be, that was going to be natural for him. Right. What did you see last fall? Tariq Barnes? Yeah what, yeah, what he's done this spring. You know, Reek's a, a, an interesting kid. Like, since I got here, right, a Memphis kid takes a lot of pride how he does things. A little bit quiet demeanor. Um, uh, I knew he was, had good leadership traits, and then when I saw the votes last year, um, uh, it confirmed what I thought. I think he's a natural, you know, he's a voice of a defense. You're an inside linebacker. He makes all the calls, um, plays with good demeanor, right? He's a, he's a very intense player. Um, I think he's matured a lot in that regards. And, uh, you know, when, when we had early conversations about coming back for a final year, because I think he could have tested the waters this year, and uh, I just think he's really got a good year ahead of him, and uh, this spring has been definitely an indicator of that as well. Tyler yeah. Strain. He got the big, yeah, he had obviously had a setback going into Purdue game. Yeah. He showed some things. Yeah. How big is that for him specifically to build on with an opportunity? Yeah, T like Strain that? is probably um uh for me as head coach been one of the guys that I've loved to grow, see grow this 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 you know, over the last year and a half. He came in. We we hadn't recruited him, we inherited him right. He was signed before we got here, but uh really uh, you can see early on he had talent, and then really over the last year has just really grown off the field, which you've now seen carry on the field. Um, uh, he was a kid that uh, it was spring break week, and he was driving home, and I missed a phone call from him like 6 in the morning. Most players don't call you at 6.30. And I'm like, at first I was a little bit worried, but uh, I got a hold of him, and, and um, he just said to Coach, I appreciate all the, you know, the coaches have done, right? Like we really helped him get through some – um, tough moments, and he he has really responded. He's an incredibly talented player. Plays really smart. Uh, has some good vision. Very competitive. I think when you talk about how players rub off, I think Spoon was a huge influence on him and the way he handles things. And and Taz kind of in the same regards. Uh, and then you know Antonio Finellas is uh, is a guy that I recruited that uh, kind of you know fits his body type right. Antonio wasn't as tall as everybody wants. Maybe not as fast, but he played a lot of really good football for us at Wisconsin. And I think. T. Strain, you know, just naturally has gravitated to some of his coaches that have showed him how he can play and a lot of good results. <coughs> Those defensive backs you had last year that were now, now going to the NFL, mm -hmm. how about, big of a long-term impact are they having on the guys now? Do you uh, see that from them? Without a doubt, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, you could see it just in the way they react. And uh, Spoon's coming back uh, next, next. I guess, I think he's coming in Monday for okay. his pro day on Wednesday. And, and I know our guys will... Um, be all over them, and, and you know, uh, uh, I think uh, I think Taz is trying to dip into Spoon's Nike contract a little bit. I see him wearing a lot of Nike lately, so um, uh, I, I just that group is really close. Right. I think they went through a lot. Um, you know, when we got in here, we kind of changed what we what they did in the back end quite a bit. There are a lot of cover two teams, and uh, we'd, we we kind of changed some things around, asked to do some things maybe they weren't comfortable with, and they're truly getting rewarded now. Um, you know, I think those three DBs, I think Sid, um, Quan, and Spoon are, are probably going to go a lot higher than people right. ever thought they would. And, and uh, the good thing for us as coaches, obviously the bad thing is they're gone. The good thing is uh, we can use them as examples, and, and they're great examples where the people they've already touched. Coach, you've invested in oh, – sorry. That's right.